Welcome to video four in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is the face mill operation. Face mill operation is designed to clean up the top face or any top faces of your part. So let's go ahead and open that up. So I'm just gonna right click on setup, add milling operation, and we'll go to face mill. That's the old way to do it. The more newer ways to do it would be to go to the ribbon and you can go to your solid cam operations, two and a half D face, or you can go to your two and a half D section and click on face. They all go to the same area, the face mill operation. The workflow of this window is the same for all our toolpaths. So from this video forward, we'll take a look at this, this menu every single time, but it works the same way. We start by choosing our geometry. Now the face mill operation actually automatically chooses face mill geometry for you based off of what you've defined as your target. You can see there that that purple section there represents just the outside edges of your target. But I'm gonna go in there and actually choose new geometry. Now the face mill actually allows you to choose your geometry in three different ways. You can define it by either solids, in this case called model, by faces, or by profile. We're gonna go through each one there just to see what the difference is, is in that case. So if you go to the model, and then you go to define, you choose the solid on your screen to define what you want to face. In this case, if I choose the top face of the solid, we'll get that, that yellow rectangle there that represents the outside edges of our solid. But our stock actually begins at this line. So we're not even facing the, the stock and I need to do that. So we're gonna keep going through here until we get something that does that for us. Now if I go to faces, define, and choose that top face, again, it will find the outside edges of that face and put a rectangle around it. So those are all flush on those sides. The difference here between these two is if I were to go to model and choose, let's say, that face, it does the entire solid because it thought I chose the solid. If I go to faces and now choose just that face, it just faces that face, that surface. You can see it put a rectangle just around the edges of that surface itself. So that's the difference between those two. Profile allows me to choose a contour. This window is gonna be the same as what you'll see when you get to videos five and six, in that what we're doing is choosing the outside contour of what it is we'd like to machine. In this case, let me tilt this a little bit. And if I choose this edge here of my stock and accept that geometry, now you'll see that the face geometry is once again, the outside edge of whatever I've chosen. In this case, it took that exact profile and now I'm using that as my, um, as my face geometry. So we'll now face the entire stock. So if you had a solid that represents your stock, you could choose the top face of that solid, and then in the model, model or faces definition style, it would choose the outside edges of that stock. But if you have the wireframe stock like I do, you'll wanna use profile. That is the main difference between the, th the, the three options. What type of geometry you're choosing to define your face mill geometry. Let me click the green check mark. And let's go to tool. So once we get to the tool section, we're gonna click select, and we'll choose from a, a tool in our active tool library. So again, we covered this in video two on how to select tools. So I'm just gonna go real quick and just define a tool. Let's say we define a face mill that is two inches. And I'll click the green check mark to accept that. Once we get into this window, even though my tool probably had fees and speeds defined for it, when I get to the data tab, I can actually plug in whatever fees and speeds I want. So when you define a tool, you give it certain fees and speeds that you want to import with. But once you get into an operation, you can change them to whatever you want to uh, in this particular tool path to suit the material you're machining or the type of machining you're doing, slotting versus pocketing and that sort of thing. In this case, I'll just leave it as is. We'll go to the levels section. And this is where I define where this tool will travel in the Z direction. So um, I can choose it from either the top of the stock. So by clicking by stock, the upper level will be set to whatever I set on the top of the stock. So in this case, the 100 thou that I put on the top face there, I can say define it by the target. So it reads the top face of the target at being at Z0. Or if I have it to user defined, or if I take control myself, I'll just highlight that 
and choose something to represent the top of the toolpath, let's say the top vertice of my wireframe. The difference here is if I do it with user define and actually choose a vertice, it gives me that color coding. The color coding indicates associativity. So if I change my stock definition, if I change my original model in the original SOLIDWORKS file, if somebody changes the height of my part, the shape of my part, if you engage associativity in your toolpath, it will automatically update the toolpath. So in my case, if I change my stock so it leave more material on the top, that 100 thou will change, but it'll always be wherever that vertice is. This toolpath will always start at that vertice. Likewise, with the face depth, I'm just going to highlight that as well and say I'd like the facing to stop at that face there. It says face depth, meaning that it knows that from that upper level to the face I just selected, there's about 100 thou of material to travel through. If I had more than that, I might want to take some multiple steps. So I can say a max step down of, let's say, 100 thou. In this case, we're just going to do it as one pass. Technology, the technology section for each toolpath is the actual specific parameters of that toolpath. So the geometry tool and levels will be the same for all toolpaths you'll see going forward. But in the technology section, we're going to tell it something specific about this toolpath. In this case, with face mill, I can tell it to either do a hatch zigzag style back and forth along the face. I could tell it to do a contour style, which is an offset from the outside edges of the geometry going inwards or outwards. I can tell it to do one pass. If the tool is large enough in diameter, I can tell it to find the mathematical center and just do one pass across the face. Or I can tell it to do a spiral, which would be a spiraling tool pass going in. And again, this is all for the finish quality, but some of this is actually for the shape of the part as well. In this case, let's just go with hatch. And you'll notice every time I choose something from this technology window, the second option, the second tab, shows me the specific parameters of that technology. So in this case, hatch asks me what angle I'd like to travel along. So in this case, this is zero degrees from the X positive axis. So I can go just along the X axis, or I can change it to whatever angle I want. I can click on automatic optimal angle. So it'll find the actual longest pass along the part and dictate that as the angle that it's going to follow. Because this is face milling, I'm going to want to go outside those lines. I want to machine off all the material in the top face of the part. So we have extensions along and across. Along and across in the direction of the, of the hatch toolpath. So in this case, along, I'm going to pass by the edges of the part by 10% 10, 10 of the tool diameter. I'm going to do the same for the along and across. At the very end, instead of having just that sharp 90 degree turn, I can add some fillets so that it actually smooths out the toolpath. I can tell it the cutting direction, either zigzag, as you can see here, it just snakes along the top face, or I can say one way. In that case, it will retract and begin at the same end every time it does the toolpath. In cutting order, I can say from side to side, so one side to the other, or from side to middle. If I choose contour, then I get parameters related to just contour. Again, what, corner, what I want to do at the 90 degree corners of the toolpath, I can either add a fillet or a loop or a sharp. Mainly these are just to eliminate any kind of cusps from being left behind. Cutting direction of the contour. And then if I go back to technology, we'll see for all, all technologies, either contour, hatch, or, or a spiral, what the overlap will be. So the overlap is actually the material that we're, we're overlapping from the previous path. In this case, it's 50% of the tool diameter. So I'm really just stepping over by the radius every time. If I want to do some roughing passes and then one final finishing pass, then I can say floor offset, let's say 10 thou. So I leave behind 10 thou, and then I can come back for a final finishing pass. So this will actually output two depths of cut, one that goes right down to 10 thou, and then one that, that goes right down to zero. In the link section, we tell it how we'd like it to ramp in and what lead in, lead out we'd like it to use. Once we're done with programming the toolpath, we can do a save and calculate. And you'll notice there is a save and calculate, a save icon behind everything we're doing. So if I had just clicked save, it would just add the toolpath to the list, but it would not calculate it. If I click save and calculate, it, you can see here it has calculated the toolpath as well as saves it. 
save calculate related operations is for when I have more than one toolpath and all those toolpaths somehow share something, either the top of stock or it's a rest milling operation. We'll see that play in more when we get to the pocketing toolpath and the 2D I machining toolpath and the turning toolpath as well. But um, for a single toolpath, these two will basically do the same thing. Calculate in parallel, either exit or save and copy, uh, allows you to calculate the toolpath on another computer, either on your on your um, on your network or um, on your same computer, but just behind the scenes. So it's not something that gets in the way of the calculation. That's something more for the larger 3D toolpath. Here again, it might it would actually just do the same thing. This button here allows us to simulate the toolpath, which I'll do right now. If we go to our solid verify simulation, I can play through this and we can see that the toolpath has faced the entire face of the part. If I wanted to G code just this individual toolpath, I can click on G code and it opens it up in my notepad. This is something we covered in video one as well. From the wireframe, we can see that from the red ball, that's where it starts. It rapids down in that red area. The red is a rapid. The green is a feed ramping motion. And then the blue, again, like we covered in video two, is the color of the tool. So that is the motion of the tool there. I've opted to do a contour on this part. You can see that it went from the outside going in, just like we saw in the simulation. Any questions on this or anything else from Solicon, give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Send us your parts and your questions via the ticket system at solicamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.